Hello, I'm Pastor Carol Clark. Art and Artifact, one of my class series at Faith Lutheran Church, is being posted in video recordings to encourage you in your study of the Word. Each topic is shared in three video sessions on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday every week. Since this is Monday, this is session one of three for this week. Let's begin with prayer. O oh Lord, guide us so that we will look at your word in a way that is rich and meaningful. We want to know you better. Send your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, strengthening us in faith and love for you. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, whose life and love we are called to imitate. Amen. Today, our topic is Old Bibles, the history of Bible production and how that's changed over time. In previous class series, I've talked about how the books of the Bible came about and were decided upon. That is not our topic for today. We'll instead focus on the physical creation and distribution of Holy Scripture through the centuries. Our key object for today is a Bible and it tells a tale from Christian history. Dating to 1597, this old Bible is a testament to a long ago period of Bible production, and there's a twist in the story too. You'll hear all about that in Wednesday's video this week. First, let's travel way back in time as we examine the most ancient surviving scriptural writings. We'll start with the Old Testament, and then we'll move on to the New Testament. The Old Testament, of course, is the Hebrew Bible and the oldest portion of Scripture. It was recorded, copied, and preserved as sacred text through the centuries by Jewish scribes. Here you see a beautifully preserved papyrus scroll of the prophetic book of Isaiah, who wrote the original in the 700s B.C., this is a copy made around 100 BC, so before the birth of Christ. In the 22nd and 23rd chapters of 2 Kings, we read an interesting story of the 7th century BC from Old Testament scripture. The great temple in Jerusalem built by Solomon was three centuries old by this time, and a renovation of the temple is ordered by King Josiah. As part of the work being done, the high priest ends up finding something described as a book of the law, probably Deuteronomy. Interestingly, this is something of a revelation. The people of Israel had forgotten they had it. When it's presented to King Josiah and he reads it, Josiah is aghast, realizing how far they have strayed from God's instructions. Now, I mention this story to illustrate that the books of the Old Testament had long since been copied and preserved through the generations, so many generations that they could forget for a while they even had them by the 7th century BC. Fortunately, from that time forward, they are diligent in copying and preserving the scriptures. The oldest surviving texts of the Old Testament are, of course, the Dead Sea Scrolls. The scroll of the book of Isaiah, which we looked at a minute ago, is one of those scrolls. In the Art and Artifact video for May 20th, I discussed the Dead Sea Scrolls in detail. If you haven't yet viewed that video, you'll benefit from watching that now. It provides foundational material for this week's topic. As we look at the long history of the production of biblical texts, we need to pause and define some terms that will be essential. So let's start with a definition for scroll. A scroll is a length of material on which writing is preserved and which is stored in a rolled form. In Old Testament times, what we'd call a book, a bunch of pages bound along one edge, had not yet been invented. A scroll is most often made by fastening several pieces of writing material together side by side. 
In ancient times, scrolls were unrolled horizontally. When we have this kind of background knowledge to scripture, it can help us picture biblical events more clearly. Let's look at an account from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. It tells how Jesus gets up in the Nazareth synagogue to read a passage from the book of Isaiah. Luke 4 says, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is early in his ministry, and Jesus is already proclaiming that he's the Messiah. He's reading from a scroll which is being unrolled horizontally. Do you see where he, quote, unrolled the scroll and found the place? He's actually going to read from Isaiah 61 and then back up to a verse in the 58th chapter of Isaiah. We can picture him rolling back to get to the next part he wants to read. This image has him correctly reading the scroll horizontally. When Jesus is done reading, he'll then roll it up from both sides so that the two rolls come together. Sometimes there were spindles that each end could be rolled around. The Dead Sea Scrolls are all written on parchment. However, the most common writing material in the ancient world was papyrus. So let's talk about both of these writing materials, papyrus first, and then we'll discuss parchment. Papyrus was made from plants that grew along the Nile River in Egypt. Papyrus was a major export commodity for Egypt in the ancient world. The name papyrus actually applies to both the reedy plant and the name of the writing material made from it. Papyrus is a fragile material, but it preserves well in a dry climate. The stalk could be peeled apart and sliced into thin strips. These strips were then laid flat side by side. Next, another layer of strips were placed perpendicularly to them. They were not woven together, just laid on top of each other in a crisscross pattern. The layers were then pressed and left to dry. The sap actually served as a glue binding the layers together. Rolls of papyrus were created by fastening these sheets together in lengths. Writing was usually limited to one side of the papyrus. Can you guess why? Well, when you write on only one side, you're writing with the grain. In fact, the lines of the fibers can serve as a guide to help keep your writing straight and even if you're writing on the side with the horizontal fibers. But on the back side of the sheet of papyrus, the fibers run perpendicular to those on the front. So writing on the back of the sheet means working across the humps of the fibers. All writings in the ancient world were in manuscript form. A manuscript is a document written by hand in the times before printing was invented. So each document is an individual handwritten copy. The earliest surviving manuscripts of the New Testament are in Greek on papyrus. These texts are widely circulated by the early believers. The originals are passed around, heavily used and reused, and they wear out. So new copies are made of the tattered originals. Because surviving New Testament manuscripts are often fragmentary, the comparison of multiple manuscripts is necessary to establish the full text. Fortunately, there are many surviving early manuscript copies, over 5,000 of them. 
by correlation and comparison, what's missing in one document can be filled in from the others. Each of the books of the New Testament was originally a separate document. These writings assembled into collections as the copies of the text were exchanged. As the originals crumbled with age and usage, the copies were all that remained. So here's how it would work. When the church in Thessaloniki received a letter from the Apostle Paul in the mid first century, the believers there would have read it aloud in their gatherings and then devoted followers who recognized the value of Paul's words produced handwritten copies of the letter to pass around to a wider audience. By the end of the first century, Paul's letters were being copied and distributed as a collection. The same process was repeated for the Gospels and other books of the New Testament. All the books of the New Testament were first penned in the first century. While books in the form of scrolls are the norm in the ancient world, Christians do something new in copying the books of the New Testament. Instead of using scrolls, they create books with single sheets or pages bound together on one edge. This new form of book is called a codex. As Christianity spreads, so does the popularity of this new form of book. Today, when we say book, we assume everyone knows we're referring to a codex. A codex made of papyrus was created by taking papyrus sheets and folding them down the center, then binding the folds. Each sheet was now written on both sides, front and back, unlike a scroll, which is written on only one side and then rolled up. Looking at these very early documents, which survive from the period of illegality, and by that I mean the time before Christianity is legalized, but looking at these very early documents is the best place to start in substantiating what early Christians believed and taught. Scholars have a system of categorizing by number these early papyrus texts. The letter P in front of the number stands for papyrus. Traditionally, that P is written in a fancy old style script. The number indicates the sequence of discovery. So P1 is discovered first, but it's not necessarily the oldest. You're looking at the earliest copy of Paul's letters to survive from the ancient world. This page contains chapters 11 and 12 from 2 Corinthians. Most of this original document collecting Paul's letters has survived. P46 has over 80 pages, a tattered collection of papyrus pages. It's amazing that this manuscript has survived for more than 1800 years. It dates to around the year 200. Here's a closer look at a page from P46. You can see here that bits of the central portions of a page may fall away, leaving holes. These are called lacunae. It's important to note here that Paul's own letters, the ones written or dictated by him, had crumbled into dust. Fortunately, these words were so prized by the early Christians that they made and circulated copies of them, lots of copies. In fact, the number of ancient copies of New Testament books is absolutely astounding in the historical sense. We have much greater preservation of ancient texts from New Testament writings than of any other writing from the ancient world. Here's P66. It's a papyrus manuscript that dates as early as 125. It's a nearly complete Gospel of John. The pages are numbered from 1 to 108. Pages 35 to 38 have been lost over the centuries. Still, it's a remarkable survival. We have many other later copies that have those pages intact, so we do know what pages 35 to 38 say. So we've talked a bit about what's going on in the early years of Christianity in the ancient world. There's a big change happening as the New Testament scriptures begin to circulate. And P66 here is a good place to note that big change. 
And the thing you should be noticing is this is not a scroll. It's a codex. Tomorrow, we will continue this discussion by looking at a wonderful artwork in Italy. The walls of a mausoleum there provide some rich insights.